having enough gear when you're traveling can be a challenge. And so that's why we built the perfect light kit. Now I know that no kit is perfect, but when we were trying to build this, there were a few different things that we had in mind. We needed it to be durable, we needed it to be versatile, and we also needed to make sure that it was under 50 pounds. When we're filming locally, we typically will travel with not just this case, we'll bring some other lights to make sure we have a really rounded light kit to make sure we can handle any scene. But this one we found has worked really well, specifically when we need to fly. So let's talk about the build of this case and what we included inside. But this all starts with the case itself. We went with a Pelican 1615 Air case. And the reasons are it's lightweight, it's only 14 pounds. It is about as big as you can get it without having to pay extra fees. And it gives us 36 pounds of carrying weight so that we don't have to go over that 50 pounds, again, charging extra fees for putting it under the plane. Next, we had to choose which kind of divider system we wanted to use to make it versatile, but also protected. And so we ended up using the A-Mode dividers. These are padded dividers that we found on bnh.com. So the case is important, obviously, but what's more important are the lights that are inside. Our key light and our main light in there is the Aperture 300X, a bicolor light that has 300 watts of output. And so this is really bright and versatile and allows us to work in different color temperatures depending on our location. And then the next light is an Aperture 120D Mark II. Now, I don't even believe they make this light anymore, so you could probably get an Amaran 200 or something like that to put in there that would still fit in the same compartment, but give you that same kind of light. And so this is our fill light. We can use it in a bunch of different ways. Then we needed to put a few modifiers in there. But what we put in there was one of the aperture reflector discs, and then we put the 2X Fresnel from Aperture. And so between those, we can throw those and use them to give us some different versatile lighting effects. So for example, we were recently on a shoot up in Seattle and we had to film in a hangar with an airplane doing an interview. So we used the Aperture 300 with an Octabox on it as our key light. And then we threw the Fresnel on the 120D in the background. And we actually put a gel on it as well to give it a little color depth. The majority of the rest of the space goes to handling the different ballasts for the lights, the light controllers. There are different cables and accessories that we need to run the lights. And then lastly, we had some area to put in a couple small aperture lights, but we have an Aperture Amaran M9 and an Aperture MC. Using these lights gives us a lot of versatility and allows us to do a lot of different things, even though it doesn't have our entire light kit, we can accomplish a lot with them. But if you wanna level it up just one more, we do have some Godox TL60 lights and our case is currently at 46 pounds. And so you have the ability to probably put one or even two of those lights on top of the foam dividers. So what didn't fit in our kit? The main thing are soft boxes. Soft boxes aren't super heavy, but they are pretty large. And so here's our workaround. We have a couple large regular suitcases. And so if we're traveling for a week, typically we can fit all of our clothes and stuff we need on one side. And then the two 36 inch soft boxes we have from Westcott, the rapid boxes. So it's not perfect in the sense that we don't have all the diffusion we need, but it gets us pretty close and protects all the really important things that are underneath the plane. Now, like we mentioned before, no lighting kit is perfect, but this really fits the way that we film and our needs. What would you put in your light kit? Make sure you comment that down below. And if you're curious to learn more about the Aperture 300X, watch this video over here where we compare that to the original Nanlite 300 bicolor light. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.